Okay, everyone. So welcome to the first real episode of uh, the great route, graveyard of Take One In, where uh, I'll be mostly drinking tea and programming. Uh, but the goal of this really is uh, to cover a learning leap uh, that is out there, where there is quite a bit of podcasts and uh, courses that will teach you programming. Uh, but mostly it's going to be about um, you know learning a new language, learning the ecosystem, uh, building uh, so-called greenfield projects. So you build something from scratch um, entirely on your own terms. And uh, then you go and enter real projects. And uh, that is usually hairy because there is a lot of accumulated legacy code. Um, you need to cooperate with other people. You also need to, um, you, to discover and kind of uh, work through, let's say, suboptimal code that someone else wrote. Uh, so I thought that I may cover that um, because I do have a legacy project that's like 15 years old, I believe, uh, probably more. Um, that I haven't touched for a long while, and I want to redo it for various reasons. And what I would like to show in, in, on all of this is um, how to approach this problem. Um, like how to redesign something that's existing uh, without killing it. Um, and it's also going to be a mix of not just programming, uh, but also product design, project design, um, architecture, and... Um, like the overall consistent approach to uh, new product development. So um, in order to get started, let me actually introduce first uh, what we're going to be talking about. So uh, the project here um, is um, not a, not English project, uh, which is also th something that you may encounter. So I'll be doing a lot of translation, um, but... Uh, the core uh, of the project is and will be in English. So uh, it is only the only the outer shell that you're developing for someone else. Um, that is also an experience in itself. Uh, the project is actually pretty uh, simple to today's standards. Um, it is a CMS, basically, uh, where you have a, a list of categories um, with, uh, with articles. But those articles, uh, they have uh, their own a lot of their own metadata. So the simplest one, they do have like a name and a text. Um, and um, for people that are locked in, they can uh, vote on them and they can assign um, a rating. Uh, then there is a discussion because obviously 90s. Um, and uh, through a lot of that, you can filter out. <clears throat> but then uh, because this is about... Um, extending uh, a local RG RPG, uh, you can also add, um, for example, monsters. Uh, and monsters, they do have a lot more uh, predefined attributes uh, that you can then go and use and uh, sort through. Uh, so you can, you know, have see monsters from certain categories. Um, you can uh, sort them by... I don't know, uh, their resistance. Um, the goal of what I'm trying to do is that this project is written really 15 years old and the technologies that are no longer sustainable. And um, I will try to redo it kind of um, as close as to one-to-one -one as I can, uh, but at the same time... Uh, you know, making informed product decisions uh, where I think that there is a better option to what there is. Um, also, there is a lot of like small hidden features because this all is custom developed um, that you're going to discover as we go and that I will uh, go and talk about. But um, first of all, I think it's important for the context also to see um, the architecture that we have there and that we are going to have. So uh, let me see if you can correctly see um, see it on the whiteboard. Um, this is uh, a pretty standard application from 90s, which means that uh, the server is written in PHP, uh, PHP 3 originally, later upgraded to PHP 4, and uh, we are unable to upgrade later because this relies on a specific feature uh, of uh, PHP that got deprecated and removed uh, in later versions. 
uh, but there is a BHP, uh, and actually the way the, it is running on server is that it's a process, it's, uh, it's a self-standing process with its own PHP configuration that is shielded by um, a light uh, HTTPD uh, server. So, uh, So, uh, as you can see, there is uh, uh, th there is the PHP code, and I s this is barely visible. So let me try to move uh, the camera closer to it, whether it will help. Uh, this is better, although there is still a reflection. Uh, so there is a PHP process that is shielded by the lighted HTTPD uh, from the internet, and there is MySQL database uh, that sorted out uh, that's used as a backend. Now um, I didn't want it to use PHP for the next version uh, for multiple reasons. Um, it would theoretically be possible uh, to upgrade the PHP here uh, for um, let me make the whiteboard larger. Uh, it, it would be possible to uh, upgrade and make the PHP, uh, you know, use the PHP to be the uh, proper and uh, final um, uh, the iteration, and like do, do, do it iteratively. But the thing is that it relies on so-called register globals, uh, which means that parameters pass through get or prosp uh, are automatically populated as variables. And if you don't want to do that, then you need to basically go through the whole code base. It is a terrible idea, by the way. Um, and uh, that is what uh, basically equals to rewrite. And uh, in that case, I have decided that I would rather uh, write it as something that I'm more comfortable with uh, those days and uh, that I trust more as a language. And I've been considering multiple options. So, uh, Let's just maybe model uh, some of the options. So one option would be to extend the original uh, application to extend an API and um, to write the new version first as a client and then like replace the API server. So that would potentially look like this. it would require new code for the PHP code base, which is not optimal, but doable. Uh, the single page application would, could potentially connect uh, directly to the, um, di di directly to the uh, API server. And I see that my hands are shaking, so this, this is a bit sub, uh, suboptimal, but I hope it goes through. Uh, and the application would be, you know, what's modern is probably React is like the choice for most people. Um, although I would agree, uh, I would argue that for this use case, um, it, it would be an overhead. That would be statically served from uh, uh, HTTPD. We would move the whole logic to the client and go with it. Um, but when I've been thinking about it, um, there are two problems uh, with that approach. Uh, one is really developing the full-fledged uh, API on the server. And uh, for security reasons, I want the server to go out as soon as possible. And uh, of course, B, also it's a throwaway code. Like if we want to replace the server, then uh, it will go and uh, you know we're sending the call uh, to the black ball. And also if you look at what this is, um, the single page applications, like they're mostly 
uh, meant th- th- they have their reasons, and uh, one of the r- reasons for introduction is that people do have those uh, multiple clients. Uh, they're developing one client uh, as a web. They're developing one client as an iOS and Android app. Uh, they're developing other client as uh, our applications that are integrating uh, with um, what you have. None of this is going to happen here. Uh, this is pretty much a legacy app. It still use it still has users. It still has visitors, um, but uh, nobody's going to write an app for that, and it doesn't even make sense. Um, so I do believe that uh, this doesn't satisfy uh, the use case to do that. Um, although I have actually uh, done some research and some prototype, so if you would go to uh, the uh, uh, to the side of the project um, and uh, to the, the let's it open uh, or GitHub organization, uh, there is actually a prototype called Faxed. Um, that was my attempt to kind of explore how it would look like uh, if uh, I would be um, doing uh, just a simple API server on top of a database um, and potentially connecting uh, Vue as it was to react uh, to the application. But uh, I have ultimately decided that that's, that's not the way to go. So um, the architecture of what we are cr- uh, going to do uh, in a way resembles so-called strangulation pattern. Um, so we are going to integrate uh, over database, uh, which is definitely something that you don't want to do in a lot of cases. Uh, but I do believe that in this specific case, um, it is the easiest way uh, to move forward. So the current architecture um, that we're going to go with uh, looks like this. Uh, there is no uh, there is no single page application. Uh, there is a full-fledged uh, Django server that's connecting directly to the MySQL. That Django is run a so-called uh, WASGI process that is also sheeted by Lighty. So a uh, few things are important on this decision. Um, one problem that you have when integrating uh, with uh, the, like directly through database, is really that you have to pay attention uh, not to destroy your data source, obviously, or modify it in a way that would cause uh, the error application uh, to go down. Uh, because that's ultimately what you're going to do. Like This development is going to take some time, uh, and I don't want to do a big switch. Uh, I want for them to be able to run side by side until we reach um, a threshold where we're going to be able to shut the old application down and to uh, switch to new solution because it's has the it, it satisfies the use, uh, the minimal user criteria. Uh, like it's sufficiently usable for people. Uh, also, it means that if we would be actually improving on some experiences, uh, for example, for editors uh, in the new version, then uh, they can totally use the new version um, together with the old database. Um, now, uh, there is, well, there are multiple problems with this. But the problem that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, for a bit, because it's kind of important, um, should you go forward, um, and uh, also I think something that you may encounter at your work, uh, compatibility issues. In theory, uh, everything has standards and everything is compatible, but uh, in reality there may be glitches, uh, usually because someone did something wrong. And in order to cope with that, um, let me explain why this podcast is actually called Take One In. We are going to drink stuff. And uh, today's um, edition of Take One In is the charcoal roast. Uh, so it tastes a bit off because it's, um, uh, it is it is dried over uh, charcoal smoke. So 
let me prepare Brown in order to be able to go forward. Um, there is one issue with how this PHP application behaves. Uh, and that has something to do uh, with um, the way applications handle text. Now, nowadays, in a lot of cases, uh, you don't really need to care about it that much because um, everything operates on UTF-8. Uh, UTF I would argue that uh, that still may not be the best thing that you uh, want to do in a lot of cases, but uh, for interoperability on current internet, um, that, that's the best you can do. Now, uh, when this application was starting, UDF8 was not really a thing. And uh, in, uh, in those cases, um, basically every application, every region, uh, decided to have its own standards about how to represent text, as in how, how binary data maps to the text you're, uh, uh, you're uh, seeing. And uh, because it was a mess, uh, there were existing and incompatible uh, standards. And uh, for, for my language, that was uh, Windows uh, 250 and uh, ISO, I believe, uh, no, uh, and ISO something too. Um, I think ISO 5592, uh, but I, I don't remember it. Uh, but the point was that um, if you have uh, if you have set the encoding in one part of the app in one way and in the uh, uh, the other way, and you have displayed the result, it was ninety nine percent correct, except for two or three characters. Um, and this is exactly uh, what was happening in the old app. Uh, the PHP was set to the Windows standard uh, for some reason, and uh, was directly storing the bytes into a database uh, that was set to the ISO standard. And uh, the result of that is that if you connect to the application uh, normally, you, ha you have those mangled characters. Um, so uh, this is something that you typically need by, uh, doing, uh, by having a transcoding layer. Uh, that was actually pretty reasonably uh, easy to do in, um, uh, in Django. Uh, but it is a hack that you shouldn't, you know, need to use, but it's good it exists. So what I did here uh, in a file called uh, magic.py, because this is magic, um, is that I have uh, decided to consciously mark the fields that are using those um, old standards as misencoded fields. Uh, so this is where we are compatible. It is a field that the old um, application is using. And I have overloaded how the values are uh, retreated. And for strings, um, I'm doing this recoding procedure that uh, makes it work uh, as you would expect uh, in the Django app uh, while retaining the uh, the compatibility with the underlying um, and uh, un with the with the under underlying PHP app. Um, so this is one piece of magic uh, to be conscious of, and um, we I, I think that we can just uh, dwell into the into it and do some work after we have tea, of course. Um, so uh, the way I'm organizing the development for this, uh, because it's a very simple project, uh, is on GitHub. So uh, there is a uh, github.com slash let's see um, projects that has a sing uh, that has the graveyard project, which is the new version. As you can see, I haven't worked for, uh, on a while. Uh, we will need to update it uh, to stay secure. That's part of that. And um, in projects, I'm maintaining the um, Trello style boards. I'm actually maintaining two for two milestones. Um, 
One is what I call house improvements. Uh, so something that we all discover that we want to do, uh, we want to do at one point or when we want to have fun or, um, you know, where we feel like it. But it's not on a critical path. It's, it's not something that needs to be done in order for this project to succeed. And then there is a evacuation from Revy, which is the name of the server um, that this is running into, uh, running on. That is uh, actually quite old and quite old and probably insecure, and uh, we th like this is this is our critical path. Uh, this this is what we want to uh, get done with. Uh, what I've been doing in one of the um, let's call it starting episodes uh, was adding a simple feature, um, which is that uh, for. Every of those categories uh, that you see on the web, um, there. Uh, so, for example, articles, um, editors do have an idea uh, about how uh, the site, like how how those editions should look like. Uh, like what are the minimal criteria they should satisfy? Um, so. That I have uh, called uh, the uh, that I have called the concept of that, so concept of creative pages because as I, I call those editions, and um, it was a pretty simple change that uh, that just uh, um, was to basically to make sure that we have all the deployment pipelines and everything set up, um, and uh, this is what I have a pull request with so. Um, the, this is maybe a good idea to uh, show some of the structures. So I kind of assume that you're familiar with Django. Um, if not, I, re uh, I recommend quickly skimming through their tutorial because otherwise um, this uh, is not going to be that useful for you, uh, although I will try. <laughs> um, but one of the core concepts of Django is that uh, you have the apps. And I've also realized that I'm still over the whole screen. So let me make myself smaller. Um, so there is this concept of apps, um, which are represented as di directories or page modules. And uh, in them, for, uh, for this app, the main one is called DDCZ, like as a shortcut for the name. And uh, in there are models that represent the database. Uh, the views somewhere, uh, views uh, that are represent the controller uh, that they have refused to call control and then call them views for some reason. And then uh, templates that uh, represent what you render to the client. So the important part uh, for what I'm talking about is in models. Models is uh, typically a single file, but it can be split. It can be split into modules that you can then include, so it's a bit more obvious uh, uh, what you're doing. And that's what I did here. So in models, I do have this encoding magic I've talked about. There is a legacy file, uh, which is what... Um, the, the, there is a Django, very useful Django command called inspectDB that basically um, creates a model based on what it sees in the database. So that all went to legacy. And then in used, uh, I'm one by one uh, moving the models that we are actually using in the app. As you can see, the database is kind of huge. Um, that's just because it's... Uh, you know, 15 years of hot fixing and iterations by various people, variously skilled and programming and various programming paradigms. Um, so uh, you're basically cleaning it up and moving it uh, to the original model. So um, creations model uh, is what stands for um, everything that is around the actual articles. I call them creations because they're not really necessarily articles. Um, users, obviously, everything that goes around uh, user model. I have adopted um, a pattern that 
I'm using the Django's original auth module, but um, I'm reusing the legacy uh, uh, the the legacy table for handling for storing user data that I call user profile. Um, as you can see, that's all the you know various misencoded and um, data fields, but it works pretty well actually. I have just added one field, and that's the relation to the our new and um, um, standard uh, Django <coughs> Django user model. And um, right in social. Um, uh, We'll come to that. Um, social is there is a one feature that's ba basically a, a very simple quote quote uh, dating uh, area that's uh, so, so surprisingly still frequently used, which is basically uh, I'm a game master and I'm looking for players or vice versa. Uh, so this is this is this is how I structure it, um, and. Now we can take a look at uh, what we actually want to do uh, our first day. So what was there? Right, I don't remember why this wasn't merged. Uh, so I think that we can start with that. Um, cleaning, cleaning up the merges and uh, actually deploying. So you maybe will see some failure in action. Um, I think that that's uh, very reasonable to expect. Uh, so let me go to the project um, that we are developing in. Uh, also, uh, for those who are not here on the first episode, I'm on my Mac laptop, but I'm remotely connecting to my Linux desktop, uh, which is mainly because um, there are some streaming problems on Linux. And there are some Docker problems on macOS, so you know best best and worst of the uh, whole world. So um, this is the code base. Uh, no, uh, this is the code base uh, that's uh, opened uh, opened in the editor. Um, we are using the uh, Python's virtual environment feature to be able to. Um, develop reasonably in isolation, and uh, we are. I mean, uh, we should be using it, but it kind of looks like if someone forgot to update uh, Xcode command line tools. Um, that one being me. Uh, so let's see what what happened here. Um, I guess rebuild. Sorry about that. Uh, no. oh. So this is where you can see the disadvantages of um, using Mac. Uh, is a reasonable Linux desktop, but not really a reasonable uh, development tool. Okay, so let's reinstall all of this and see what happened. I actually didn't knew that this is related, um, but I have been updating my uh, system recently, so I assume that it has some dependencies that I'm not entirely aware of. And uh, this looks like it's going to take a while. Uh, so I guess that meanwhile, um, we're going to do stuff differently. And yes, um, there are updates available. Right at the time I've been uh, starting to do the streaming. Of course, this is how IT works. So, what we can do, um, meanwhile, as a hotfix, uh, while I'll be waiting for this, um, is that we can uh, do 
good operations on the remote machine because the effect is going to be the same. Uh, so, uh, oh, sorry. So I will connect um, to the Linux desktop. Uh, also, talking and writing is harder than it uh, than it sounds, of course. And in the graveyard, let me also enter screen, uh, just in case something would, would uh, went wrong. And um, we will see what branch are we in. <coughs> so this is correct. Also, woo and uh, this is not going to take uh, until tomorrow. I hope it will not require restart or will not auto restart. Let's see. Um, so uh, let's make sure that we are on the newest version. Um, that we don't have anything that's uh, important and unc uh, uncommitted. Like a template file. I would say that that should actually go in the original pull request. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so if we take a look uh, on the branch, uh, because I don't remember that one. Uh, so creative pages concepts is the branch. Um, is it here? Yes, it is here. Uh, so well, let's go there. Uh, and let's at this file that kind of looks significant. And uh, was it a single commit or was it two commits? Uh, what we've done here. It was two and the page should be in the first commit. Um, so let's learn rebase. Um, so first let's commit it. Uh, so yeah, so this is the template we're missing. Um, let's not even have a proper commit format because this is just a dummy commit, but still, um, a missing template. Um, and now, uh, let's rebase it on top of master and let's do it interactively. So, Wow, okay, so according to this, we, uh, the pull request is in the master. And the only our add missing template uh, is what's missing. Which is weird and makes me think that we have merged the file locally, but haven't pushed. Uh, so, Let's see. Uh, if we do a git lock, we can see that uh, we have pushed. So the fixed production deployment is the last master. Um, Okay, if you go back to the original branch, uh, also git checkout uh, dash or something, uh, same as in uh, shell, gets you to the previous directory. Uh, you can do the same uh, in checkout, I think, uh, should give you to the branch we've been to. Um, and it's ahead of the CP concept, sure. Um, and we are three commits on top of master, which is correct. So, oh, right. Um, rebase, interactive rebase uh, by default, uh, rebases you against the tracking origin of the current branch. So against origin Alma CP concepts. That's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to do it on top of master. Uh, well, uh, local master, but uh, Sometimes you may want to do at, at uh, against origin master, but those are in sync for us. Verifiably, we just checked. So now you can see that um, you have three commits. Uh, last one is last. First, first one that diverges from the original branch is first. 
um, with a typo because you know feet and feet. Uh, so what we can do is just um, for time let's do it in steps so it's more obvious. So first uh, let's just reorder it. So what you can do is um, just move the comment. And unless something went wrong, unless you have uh, conflicts, this is how it works. And you can see that, um, yep, our missing template co uh, commits uh, miraculously moved up. Also, as you can see, uh, the timestamps are preserved. So uh, we have basically moved newer commits below older commits. That is perfectly fine. Um, and in the next iteration, uh, what we want to do is just to merge the commit with the previous one. So uh, that's the squash command. So we can either write S or uh, do squash. And if we do that, uh, we are going to get asked for the uh, what, what should be the final com uh, commit message by default. It is the merge of those two. We don't want to do that because, uh, you know, this is just what it always should have been. And also, it allows us to fix the commit message. So, there we go. This is how it should have been uh, from the day one. What, and even fixed, what, uh, what uh, right another thing that we may want to do is to uh, add the refs so let's just do it uh, for practice uh, because this definitely should um, be there and um, if you do it in this way it will not get propagated uh, but what we can do is do reward now this view is really a preview so if I save it I will get a chance to reward, and you can see that my edits are not there. Uh, so let's add them. And now uh, when we save, uh, we are done. And uh, this is how it should look like. Now if you try to push, this will not work. Because uh, we have changed history. Um, th this is not like uh, this is not fast forward. Uh, this is not something that um, get allows you to do. Uh, so two ways to do that. You can do force push. This will override the remote history, but you have to pay attention uh, to uh, what you're doing because some of the Git clients are set up to push all your branches, not just the current branch. And if you would use force in that scenario, you would override uh, all the remote branches you have diverged from and potentially delete someone else's work. Um, so it's really better not to do that. What you, but what uh, Git allows you to do is to push a particular branch. Uh, so, you know, by default you don't have to do that, but this is what it does by, uh, what it does by default. Um, the first parameter is not the branch though, but the server you're pushing to, uh, which we call origin. This will still not work. This is what we have done before. But, you can say force push this particular branch. Uh, and this is the equivalent of dash F, but for particular branch. Uh, so this is a safe thing to do um, if you want to um, deal with this properly. Now, while we are waiting for the tests, um, let's actually see uh, what those alerts are about. Um, so this is our pull request that we have just, you can see uh, it looks differently and you can also see that uh, uh, the template is there now, which is what we forgot about. So um, you saw the Checks not completed, so let's take a look at the alert. Django, moderate severity. Um, well, 
What is there? Django, 2.2 before 2.2, uh, 10. So we can't use 2.2. We are stuck on 2.1 because 2.2 requires a version of MySQL we don't have. Uh, so we are fucked if this uh, really affects us. Um, but we can backport, you know, there are ways we can backport patches. Uh, you know, we'll see. Um, else SQL ingestion is bad. If untrusted data is used as a string aggregator delimiter, I'm quite sure we are not doing that. Uh, by passing a suitable crafted delimiter to country Postgres aggregates strict aggregator, it says it's possible to uh, break escaping and inject malicious SS. So we're not using uh, Postgres on production, so this doesn't uh, affect us. So vulnerable code not actually used. Good. Uh, but this does show how we should move our SS and um, have this ready as soon as possible because whatever you leave on the internet is uh, vulnerable all the time. We, we just don't know how to do long-term secure software, uh, which is also why IoT is um, a very intriguing idea from the security perspective. Um, so how are checks doing? So all checks have passed. So, you know, you can merge this um, either from GitHub, but I somehow uh, prefer to do it from console because um, uh, handling with conflicts and everything is better. Uh, so let's merge and push and wait for the checks one more time. It should be relatively quick. I have a team meanwhile. It's always uh, it's always important to keep hydrated when programming. And talking. Um, also, while edits um, has the install finished yet? No, four minutes remaining. Let's see how much of our configuration it will kill. So, C merged. We can delete the remote branch. Um, I usually don't bother with local branches because um, it can be a useful backup. And um, if tests pass a master, I, I'm actually not sure how to verify that. Uh, is there? A, I'm not sure if there is an easy click, but definitely we can just go directly to circle which is um, still kind of my favorite CI of choice for uh, for open source projects. Um, it is kind of faster and nicer than Travis, but the um, big disadvantage is that it can't really handle um, matrices. Uh, if you want to build for uh, various configurations of um, you know various um, versions of Python or versions of a database that you would use, then this is not optimal, uh, and uh, in that case, Travis is better, or you know anything else that you want to use. Um, so our master is running, and it says success. Although this looks kind of weird, um, but I also think that our tests don't actually use MySQL yet. We should change that. What is this? No active incidents, cool. Congratulations. Uh, Non-ironically. So, um, we have a master, uh, so we should be able to deploy. And um, I'm always trying to have a single deploy script. So, let's see whether it works. And Pip is supposedly not found, which I mean, what else do you have in that virtual environment? Um, what have I done wrong? Um, 
This is not considered pip or what? Uh, all right, uh, so activation of the virtual environment, uh, you need to do source. Otherwise, it seems like it's working because activate is a bash script, but the uh, variables, not all variables are propagated to the upstream terminal. Um, so now you should have pip. Or not. <laughs> what? So one hypothesis would be that uh, we fucked up with the original one source, so one easy way out. Um, kill this Ramil, start a new one. Uh, source environment properly. I, I mean, second guess is that it has something to do with uh, the upgrades. Also, potentially with the fact that uh, if you would be in ZSE, but we, we are in Bash. Um, I'm not sure whether Activate supports that. Um, this is weird. So let's learn some debugging. Um, so how operating system, at least Unix-based operating system, uh, looks at the location of um, executables is through the path environment variable. And as we can see, we do have one there, but also uh, I am not uh, I'm not sure. Yes, I am in a correct directory. Um, and right, this is a wrong path. Can you see that? Yep, this is missing a prefix. Uh, Right, so this is actually a virtual environment that has been created on a remote computer that I'm trying to uh, reuse on um, on the over the network attached Mac OS. That will not work for multiple reasons, uh, but one of them is that uh, it is uh, the, the the virtual environment of is fixated on the location on the file system. If you move the project, it will not work. So uh, one of the ways is uh, also to, just for simplification for now, uh, do it remotely. So if I connect here, um, and yes, I remember that in, I forgot that in previous episodes, we have been doing that remotely. Um, because multiple reasons, uh, one of them being, uh, only one of them being Xcode. Um, so um, now when I'm sourced, uh, I should have pip. PIP, I, I mean, whatever. And uh, let's see whether deploy would work now. <coughs> right. So the way this works, this is, I think, also pretty indicative of um, handling with legacy projects. Uh, so let me actually, let, let, let us use the dashboard one more time. And I also promise to have a stabilizer for the camera next time or something. Um, so deployment pipeline. Theoretically, the best way, uh, I mean, a simple way is uh, you have Django or something, but the harder way, if you're doing your own infrastructure, um, you connect to the remote server uh, and you set up everything there. Um, but in this case, this server is so old that it doesn't support connecting to PIP because it doesn't have a proper open SSL. Uh, so the way it works and that we want to fix over time 
and uh, let me just insert the password on the deployment before we go. Um, the way it works is, and you could have seen that at the beginning, uh, is that we are actually downloading the packages locally, uploading them to the server, and uh, doing the magic with the packages there. So that is a complete anti-pattern, uh, but I will still describe it. <laughs> So actually, the computer we're running on um, is a part of deployment. Uh, that should never happen. Uh, you should always do that on uh, some CI. And um, we actually may do that in one of the future episodes. So you have, uh, you have a computer that you can't really see because the autofocus works terribly, um, but it should get better. Uh, the computer is running to the remote server, uh, in our case called Revy. Uh, that is the server that uh, users are accessing. Our local computer uh, is the one that's connecting to um, PyPy. So, on the local computer, we are going to take the um, gather the requirements uh, that we have, so requirements.txt, and download all the packages to our local computer. Uh, PIP can do that, uh, and uh, it downloads the um, archived versions, because we fortunately uh, don't need anything more specific. And we, uh, one of the things to potentially download is so-called wheels, um, which is a binary format, but that is not uh, guaranteed to be compatible between computers. So we download the source files, then the next step is to upload the source files uh, to the Revit to a new directory. So uh, there is a directory uh, in there that's running the current version. Uh, we are going to create a new directory called, uh, let's call it graveyard new. In the directory, uh, we upload all the new packages. Um, uh, well, we we are, are uh, we upload there uh, from Git uh, the source files. Then we upload uh, the, uh, um, the then we create a virtual environment there. Uh, we tell PIP uh, to use this specific directory that we upload all the packages to from the local computer. That is the key word. Um, and after that, uh, we have a pretty standard and reasonable uh, deployment procedure, meaning that uh, virtual, virtual environment is created, um, all the uh, packages are installed, uh, and telling PIP to use this directory. Um, we um, basically simulink um, the uh, we, we kill the old server, uh, change the symlink to the new source file, restart the process, and there we go. Um, this could be improved, but with the traffic there is, and uh, given how, how this works, um, that's, that's fine. Um, also, now the deployment is complete, so let me make myself smaller again on the screen. 
um, if my computer editor can handle that. The streaming is more demanding on computer power than I would expect, to be honest. Uh, so let me maybe make this smaller from the app. Uh, but this is how successful, I mean, successful with warning deployment looks like. Um, we have restarted the process. Uh, we have run the migrations. Um, everything seems to be reasonably fine to our standards uh, before we can clean it up. So um, now if you go to production, and uh, there is a trick. Uh, I have uh, pre-logged um, to the admin, and I hope that I'm still logged in. Um, because uh, when I've been trying this episode before, uh, we logging into Django admin for a reason I don't understand kills the open broadcast software. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, sure how that can happen. And it's another thing to debug in the future, uh, but it happens. Uh, so deployment went well uh, in a sense that um, we can see the well. We can see the server uh, still running. Um, uh, oh, and I can't really look into the local site, so. First, um, let's also run the local version so you can see it in action. So I guess in the same terminal, um, the only thing that we should need to do is to run the run server. Now, oh, and uh, we are not going to be connecting to the local socket. I remember it's a, a remote machine, so we need to tell it to bind to uh, all the interfaces, uh, which when I was young was done like that. Uh, but we apparently need to supply uh, the port as well. So we can see it running, but as I said, um, logging into Django would kill this screencast, unfortunately. Uh, so let me try a hack. I have connected through the VNC to that uh, remote computer. Uh, here we can potentially be able to use localhost. Um, and indeed we can, except it's not in old hosts, because we haven't edited it. Uh, and I'm not sure if this computer is self-conscious of it. Nah. Um, okay, so let's fix that. So that's a Django property. Uh, go to the editor. Um, and in settings, which we have in that uh, one overall project, and in local settings, um, there should be old host somewhere here. So let's also add localhost. And um, while edit, uh, let's also add the last common localhost. Which makes me wonder whether this is ready for IPv6. Um, that should also be one episode, networking. It's terrible, don't do it. Um, so let's look at screen sharing and try localhost at 8000. There we go. So let's go to admin. And I also for I do wonder whether I remember my login actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, one way to find out. Nah. So um, let me look up uh, here into my one password whether um, it is something that I do remember or not. Doesn't look like I that. Um, so, another things to fix. Uh, we Django can uh, change your password uh, if you have super user access to the command line. Uh, so, 
I think is uh, change password. I think that this is the reason why it haven't went through um, because I've been trying something that's, you know, more remember rememberable. Um, this is why you always should use. Um, why you should always use password managers, and also what. This is how we properly handle legacy. Uh, so let me check. Um, whether pasting works. Um, all right, so nobody invented a shared clipboard um, in this case. Let me try one more. Huh. Can you... set it? No. So this is, this is actually the um mac os default uh safari uh screen sharing so i guess this is what we can blame um i'm not sure why it's trying to alter the um why, why, why it's trying to alter the uh, the error table um, but also potentially uh, let us try the all right um, I do have a different password there um, I I'm actually not sure whether the oh it is for Nick, so let's try whether it will fail. This worked, so let's see whether it will work here. Um, something went wrong on the server. For example, the fact that we're not running it. Um, also, let me have another console ready for those admin commands, um, just so we don't screw it up next time. Uh, so let's try to do this again. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, something went wrong with the deployment because uh, this is the concept that we can add for individual creative pages. And um, if you can, if you look at the production admin, that's not there. So either different permissions, um, entirely possible, but the other thing is, um, the other thing that I would actually potentially blame it on is has the server, uh, the process rotation run well? Uh, this is something that can happen. Um, it, I mean, if you have Heroku or like a more reasonable deployment pipeline, uh, hopefully and probably not, it should of course never happen until it happens. And that is that uh, killing the process goes wrong for whatever reason. Uh, the process stays up, uh, it's added to the port. Uh, new version doesn't, um, doesn't start up properly because you know um, port is occupied by the previous process uh, and then you're still running from the cache um, and uh, you're unhappy so um, 
let me see if we can connect to the server. Um, I um, uh, let me do that from the Linux server actually, uh, because um, there I think I have proper hosts yeah. and the daemon. So, wow. I mean, there is probably no screen running, Mac. It is. Huh. So just FYI, um, screen inside a screen, um, probably on Linux terminal doesn't work well, which is very interesting. Um, but let me try to sudo for which I need my password manager again. Um, that is hopefully off screen to you. Um, although, you know, um, not like I think is displayed. So, huh. hello, let me go to be a super admin. There I am. Um, and uh, I also tend to go to, to the temporary directory uh, for operations. Uh, do we have a PST video? So, so this is a very useful command. So this shows you the tree, although even when your terminal is not fully functional, whatever it means. And um, here you can see the structure of uh, the processes that are running and um, the one we are interested in uh, so there there is a G unicorn um, which is the one uh, that's supervising our processes and you can see we are using that uh, for multiple things as we scan boot is kind of a watcher that uh, restarts the processes as needed um, this is where restart uh, hasn't went well um, this doesn't give us any information about which process in particular uh, we are looking at, um, but we know it's uh, in it's the graveyard. Uh, see, so uh, those are the processes we are running in. Um, our virtual environment, um, the Wolski process I've been talking about. Um, I mean, if we let's first try to call them um, using supervise. Uh, so we have the service defined in uh, in here and. Um, it's this one. So let's see whether the PIDs changed. And they haven't. So Supervise is having problem killing those processes for some reason. Um, if we would do that manual, would it change something? Yeah. Uh, have, have they all changed PID? Yep. So this looks like a uh, restart, which is very unfortunate that we need to do. Um, so, you know, let's make that an improvement uh, for our next pipeline. And uh, let's see whether it help in uh, admin. Um, So this is the local one, this is the production one. It had. So something to pay attention to uh, even for the next times. Proper process calling. Um, this is something, I mean, if you're working on a, a reasonably abstracted infrastructure, um, this shouldn't happen often. Uh, but like the problem with uh, Let's say uh, runaway um, 
runaway process or cluster or hanging cluster is actually not uncommon. Um, so, as I've mentioned, um, there are some concepts on production, so uh, let's steal them. Uh, so in there, if we go, for example, for best theory, so monster manual, there is something. It is a, uh, you know, completely separate its own uh, HTML page, and also I'm a bit out of the viewport, so let me move closer towards you. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is something that we can just look at the source code, copy it, and go to the admin, um, say that we want to do a new one, uh, monster manual. This is my favorite feature of Chrome that I've always loved uh, and that of course doesn't work here uh, when I want to show it, which is resizing the um, text around. Somebody pushed it. Um, so we do want to kill uh, the envelope. So um, this shouldn't be here. As you can see, the Windows encoding and this error shouldn't be here. And the rest of it should hopefully just work. Um, so let's save it. See what happens to our HTML skipping. Um, nothing visibly. Uh, go to the new version. There is a link and superficially it actually looks like it's working. Um, even the formatting is kind of working. Um, not this one. Not even this one, this one. Um, okay. So, as usual, this took longer than we thought. Um, but I think that uh, we can successfully mark this as done. Um, so, this is the evacuation project. Is a charter in progress, and we can move to something more serious. Cheers! Now, as you can see, not everything goes moved from issues to projects. So, um, so let's take a look. Those two cards. Um, This one is going to be hairy. Uh, we want to separate static media properly. Um, being able to reset password uh, sounds easy, uh, and it's built in in uh, Django, but it actually got tricky because uh, there is a security bug in Django now, uh, where resetting password um, allows you to reset someone else's password under certain conditions uh, with uh, Unicode. So it's going to be a bit more tricky uh, than you would normally um, think. Um, now, let's see whether there is something for this afternoon. Um, so charters is what we did. Shouldn't it be done? We moved it to done, but it was not automatically closed. So let's close it because, hoo hoo. Um, changing skin is going. This is going to be fun, but 
relatively easy production consistency check. Yeah. Upgrade to Django 2.1. I think that we are on Django 2.1. We are not on Django 2.2. Um, which... Let me actually check. Um, it's been a while and I'm considering uh, actually doing this more often just for that reason. So in requirements we are saying, uh, okay, 2.0. Uh, so... Two dot one, or actually um, two dot two maybe, uh, because Django three that's going to be even more challenges. Um, but let's do it step by step, uh, figuring out how to move on, how to um, strangle the old uh, front end, uh, migrate the database to somewhere useful, and then we will see. Uh, so this is this is definitely in the bright you know, bright after uh, migration area. Let's call it this way. Um, I also think that I should probably put in some real estimates um, so you can see how good uh, good our engineers at estimating. All right. Um, Problem with common articles when spidering. Um, there is a bug on production that we could potentially uh, do. Gallery overflow. Uh, semantics in article detail. Also, can you actually batch edit uh, stuff in projects? Also, um, given there are people watching, uh, if you have any preference for what I should go to, go into? Let me know in chat. I'm watching it. Um, so those should go into the pre-production. Definitely. Um, so maybe, oh yeah, this is uh, this is definitely on the chopping block. Uh, later links, yeah. Right, future now. We want printing, sure. Um, so, well, salary not strictly needed initially. Um, those things should go. The public mailing infrastructure is going to be a lot of fun um, those days. So, can you move those to project? You can't. Oh, come on. Oh, well. Um, so, let's look at it one by one. Um, Oh, writing a custom HTML parser. That I think should maybe uh, its own first episode. Um, yeah, I mean, edX is definitely a future. So if I look at the New version. Um, one thing that's obvious is really, I mean, fixing the layout a bit, um, but all the creative pages that we're not supporting yet, um, that's the main issue, and the skins, um, because skins were kind of staple. And I also considering it um, a bit of a fun, like a bit of a fun challenge, to try to redo what was what previously required, uh, you know, its own set of duplicate templates and duplicate code, into something that can now only be done using CSS. Um, so, do do do. What do I feel like? 
We'll do if you like. Um, if I take a look at an article, so right. Uh, also, one thing that we are doing here is that we are linking to um, authors' emails, and I think that we shouldn't do that. <laughs> So, especially because they have different preferences. Yeah. So let's fix that. And it's going to be fun for multiple reasons, actually. So one thing that we want and need to do is going to be uh, the user profiles. And the other thing is going to be a linking between the author and the article. Yeah, let's do that. And actually, I would go as far, this shouldn't be on the internet. So let's sanitize this. And um, do not show emails first. And uh, then let's create etiquette for ourselves on, on that proper linking. Um, do we have this writers no this is different this is for editors of the um, individual sections whereas what we want is uh, proper authors so let's make it an issue um, so properly link uh, I think article authors to their profiles. And just for the record, um, I actually think that the domain dictionary uh, that I'm trying to create, um, which is, you know, a single uh, sets of words that are used uh, in the same way everywhere, uh, is not articles. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, so creative pages. Oh, sorry, no. Um, I'm calling them common articles. Do we have a... Yes, we do creation. Creation, creation is what I'm looking for. So um, creation authors. Um, so it is going to be on me today, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, it is a bug as well as an enhancement, actually. It is definitely needed for evacuation. And... Um, let's get it even... Well... Beta launch is actually out there. I mean, we are running somehow. So that's a milestone I should probably kill. But uh, that's housekeeping. Let's do it afterwards. And um, let's move this to in progress because I'm going to work on it now. Uh, OK. We do have potentially a local git just for fun let me try okay so it was um, developer tools good to know um, so let's take a look and I'm almost willing to do this directly in a master um, but um, no uh, hide email. Uh, and in there, uh, this is in a list of common articles. Is it in all of the 
types of creations, yeah. Well, fuck. So let's take everything that have dash list and um, just use a hash here for time being. Uh, so I'm actually almost tempted to say that this like that I should hash the email or I don't know. The problem with this is uh, so a bit of a context, um, which is also why you know stuff like this can happen. It is that um, originally um, I have been adding uh, articles of people that were not registered on the site. Um, there were a lot of sites uh, with the additions to this particular RPG. And I have emailed the authors and asked them whether they would mind being added to kind of, you know, central database everybody could go and uh, take a look into. And a lot, of them, a lot of them said yes. So I have, uh, I mean, of course with attribution. This, this is exactly what, um, what happened there. So I have edit the attributions um, a lot of time including emails um, because they wanted to do so. Spam was not such a problem back then. Um, and this is how, how this is what led to uh, all of this not being uh, directly tied to uh, the user database. So um, in here, the email should actually stay uh, because this is the dating part where people want people to contact them. <laughs> so um, there we will leave it, but everywhere else, uh, nope. So j just for sanity check, uh, let's search through all of this and uh, see whether, is, whether there is mail somewhere. Uh, and it is in models, obviously. Uh, so, but we are only interested in views and I don't think that we're passing uh, a view anywhere, uh, you know, um, data from control uh, to view in, uh, in a bad way. So um, let's see whether we can do this. Yeah. So, um, I, gosh, I'm saying views, but I mean templates, of course. Um, so let's see whether this is still in some templates uh, and it's still in monster retail. So as you can see, sanity checks, always go for them. Uh, so monster retail, where have we missed D? Um, Oh, here. Coolio. So let's not display the email for time being. Um, so not in templates. And uh, let's just to be sure for the original email, for the um, overlapping project uh, app uh, that actually contains the settings. So Thanks. Let's not display emails. And the uh, references the issue that we've been having. Um, that I don't see the uh, screen. Yeah. Sorry, the window navigation is a bit hairy uh, as the streaming window is open. Uh, also, welcome to all the new people. Comments welcome. <laughs> uh, so this is referring 42. Hitchhiker's Guide would be happy. Uh, so reference 22. Let's push it. And uh, I should improve my git configuration. Uh, 
Is this something we should do together, or is this a homework that I should prepare for the next time? Uh, how many people are using, um, like, not enough familiar with Git uh, to know what this is doing? I'd be interested. I mean, if people are actually listening or interacting, <laughs> that is. Um, so now we should see a commit and a build, hopefully. So let's wait, wait for it to pass and merge. Um, meanwhile, uh, let's figure out how we are going to do the pairing, because that's actually going to be fun. Let's take a look at the model, because the model is not what you think it should be. Um, let's kill all the templates. It is a very new experience to program on the small screen again. Um, so in here, um, in the models, um, this should be in creations, I think. Uh, without, if we don't do typos. So in creations, in creative page, um, there, well, not in creation, which encapsulates everything. Um, so we do have an author and we do have an author email. And we do have a source and we do have a source mail. So source and source mail is, uh, that is what I've been talking about, like for things that were um, remotely, like that they have been added externally. Uh, so there is actually a way to distinguish them, in which case the author and author email is no. Uh, so we can't really rely on that, um, on its existence. Uh, so we need to handle nils properly. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the author should be a nickname that should be connected to the or whatever is in the user profile. Uh, so we're going to do a lot of indirections here. Um, there are multiple ways to do that. So either uh, we can create a foreign key uh, on author, um, which we actually can't do currently because the uh, the foreign keys in MySQL are only used on a backend called inodb, but you're stuck with my ISAM. So we can't do foreign keys as uh, like in, in, in their original sense, as in something that would actually protect the integrity of the data. Um, and also this prevents us from uh, ever renaming nicknames. Uh, this is why we have always been against um, and I think that we only did that few times and did a lot of user search and uh, yada yada. Um, so that is something to clean up in the future, uh, like to, to add an ID. Uh, but what we could do is to add a virtual attribute uh, that would on the fly do a lookup on user profile based on the nickname. That should work. So Nick is what should be in the author. Let me think a bit what are the holes in there. Okay, so the source is static. I actually do wonder how many of those unattributed uh, articles are in there. Um, but I think it's still a non-trivial non uh, non amount potentially. Uh, so we'll have to handle those. Uh, but for the purpose of linking, um, let, let's, let's start with this. Uh, so, uh, there is a, 
an attribute. So, right. So meanwhile, uh, our CI has run. So let's merge it to master and um, deploy while we are figuring this out. Um, so let's merge the branch, push it. And in a moment, um, let's, let's wait for the sys. I mean, I'm tempted to say uh, this should be easy and nothing can go wrong, but let's wait for the CI and uh, meanwhile figure out how things should go. Um, so uh, in in Python, there is this, uh, f there is this uh, concept uh, called, I think, pro either property or attribute, where you can say, if you're trying to access this attribute, um, let's call this function instead. Uh, but I do believe that Django uh, models may have their own version of that because they're overloaded, um, overloading the attributes. So um, I guess Django virtual fields, uh, model fields um, is what, yeah, virtual model fields uh, is what we are looking for. Um, I still prefer the documentation over Stack Overflow, uh, but let's see whether it is here. Uh, field types, um, attributes for fields, attributes for fields, no, 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 no. Um, hmm. Okay, Stack Overflow wins. Uh, maybe it's called differently. Um, so confirmation, um, so it does property, um, that doesn't sound good, uh, but it's 11 years ago, well, uh, Yeah, a little bit. No, 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 this is not what we want. Uh, so let's see what are the potential alternatives to this. Um, no. Googling is what always happens. Invalid feature, why? Composite fields is not what we want. So would this be a normal attribute? Um. I mean, that would definitely help. How to expose the property on Django? Well, well Google has better indexing. Uh, <coughs> so, What is field? New for me. Oh, that's in taste by. No. Not what do I want? But What? So maybe pro. Maybe let's try the property. And um, in that case, we should also talk about tests. <laughs> we currently only have unit tests. 
Um, so, um, I guess next episode may be a time to introduce the full test to it. But what have you had here? So um, let me take a look what data do we have on the local host actually. So if uh, we go to the local version that incidentally contains database. Um, this currently gives us, you know, navigating to the same page because that was that was our last update, which reminds me uh, that we may want to deploy. Uh, if the CI run properly, uh, let's double check that. Uh, so the display up. Uh, so deploy before we go any further. Um, and when doing deploy, don't forget to be sourced. Uh, speaking of which, also it's a good idea the not to deploy wires while the server is running because um, that can create problems with log files and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, don't do that. Now, uh, their property is what we've been looking for. Um, and for the switch branching, we can only work on it. Okay, so there is going to be the get outer, I guess. Outer profile, let's call it outer profile to be sure. Um, and also let's Americanize it. Um, so get outer profile which uh, doesn't actually need any attributes and uh, it will return as a profile. Uh, do we have it imported? No. Will there be a circular import? Yes. So we need to do a local import. Uh, this is kind of no, it's not. Uh, this is important. Okay, uh, you need to pay attention to the um, import graph and make sure that you you know you're not depending on each other. Uh, but in this case, uh, we should be fine. So uh, from users import, uh, I guess it was user profile. Yeah, and in here. Um, we would, it should be a single user profile. So profile should be user profile, objects get where the nick of the user uh, would be same as our outer field spelled in check. Um, there is a question what to do with emails. Um, for time being, I would not display it at all. And maybe in the future we can do some, you know, click your another bot to contact outer or like a contact for or something. Um, so this is going to give us the profile. And since we are not doing anything with it, we can just return it. Um, and if we would do a user profile does not exist, uh, then we just return nothing, I guess. 
this will be uh, this is potentially a bit tricky since we will mostly be using the attributes of it um but i think it's fine that should work fine and um the property of that should be outer profile um is the property get outdoor profile um, object. Now let's see how the deployment is going. Okay, get it uploaded. And uh, now it's going to be the real installation phase. Um, and let me double check whether the properties, I mean, let's see at the Stack Overflow whether the property syntax is um, working the way I thought and yeah, should be. So let's do a quick break. Um, let's wait for the deployment and um, I will also turn the lights on here. So uh, see you in a few minutes recording instead of stop it actually all right so we'll come back um, if I'm not mistaken our deployment went and was successful so now uh, we can take a look into that profile thing uh, so let's save and actually also go to the correct branch um, so previous branch Let's start the server as well, so we can take a look. And um, the call was the outro profile. And there are two ways to superficially verify uh, whether this will work correctly. One is to look at, uh, take a look at the page. The other one is to write a test. Since our test suite is currently in the state it is, uh, which we want to fix, um, let's really do the superficial test first um, just because of time but um, I think it will be the major team for the next episode to actually build it up because um, the existence of the correct uh, test suite uh, that's like an incremental time server uh, so um, do we actually have an open the version well, we don't. We are all on about production, so let's take a look. Um, so nothing broke since we are not displaying anything. Uh, but let's do it in the template. So the attribute should be ultra profile, which would currently display an object, which is not what you want. Um, <coughs> but just for verification, let's actually display the nick. Uh, that should tell us whether something is there or not. Um, the page I'm looking at is this one. Uh, so here we go. Um, and it's article dot author profile. We should get the profile um, retrieved. It is here where we should add the attribute. So uh, let's do that. Um, reload. Okay, something went wrong. Uh, outer profile. Oh, because we have changed it in the detail. So let's take a look there. And yeah, it is uh, retrieving it correctly. So easier than we thought. In which case, the thing we are missing is um, a page to link to. So we need to create that one. 
um, it is also the one uh, that we should refer from the uh, like f have you to be able to join your own so let me log in just so it's obvious yeah so your name should be a link or maybe we should add a profile here I actually don't know how it is in the current version um, Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's do that over HTTPS. I haven't implemented the upgrade just because the I wasn't sure whether the certificate handling um, is done correctly. It's true. Um, the common needs, but hey. no, you actually can't. Oh, you can go to uh, to your own profile, but it's called stats instead of profile. Mm, yeah, I'm I'm not sure which one is better. Um, huh. Okay. Oh, and wow, it's going to be twentieth anniversary uh, of the site um, next year, actually. So yeah, let's make sure we're giving it a good gift. Hmm. So that's going to be a new section. Hmm. Do we want to keep the changes we did? Yes, we want. Uh, although it's not a good start. Oh, it is. OK. So uh, first thing that I'm doing when creating a new section is to think about the URL actually, um, where it should be, what is it related to. And we do have a user space uh, for users. Um, so let's add one that would be called profile and it should be same for <coughs> public and private and theoretically actually like slash user slash the user id should be what we need um or a nickname but that could potentially conflict with other uh, urls but maybe we can do uh, what we are doing in the um, for the creative pages, which is let's uh, use integer um, and a nickname and a, 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 a slug of a nickname, which I don't think we have actually. So maybe we have to start with the with the uh, nickname ID. How is it done on the original site? So in here, because we, we, we will want to set up redirects. Uh, so in here, we're using the ID only. Uh, so I think that Let's do the user, and it's not user ID, but it's user pro profile ID, by the way, uh, because we are collaborating over the old table. Uh, so let's do user profile ID. Kind of sucks, it's mandatory. Um, because for the future, This can this maybe will not fly, so maybe let's do a, a legacy. Redirect. I mean, we could potentially do just a redirect URL, which would be like you know, um, user legacy. Uh, slash ID and it would redirect to the new one. 
Um, but the way it currently works is that uh, the user profile is for everyone, whereas the user is not. And the user profile um, is potentially nil because we have migrated the all profiles. And the users are only created when um, people log in, like when, when, when they migrate. Um, I can show it here. Uh, <coughs> there, uh, gosh, where is it? Um, on login, if you log in uh, using the authenticated password, then your user profile is retrieved. That's always there. And uh, your profile is migrated by creating the new uh, user in the Django authentication framework. So even going forward, um, we can't really expect a fully consistent database in terms of uh, every user, like every author having a user object. Um, there will be cases where there always will be a user profile without the associated user. So in which case, um, yeah, let's, let's make it explicit that you're going for user profile ID. And I would argue that for niceness and clarity, um, we should have an XLUC there. Uh, that's potentially optional. Um, and in that case, it would be redirected. But oh, let's call this user profile. That we are going to do when we're going to go check redirects. Um, you know, it's 20 years old of internet history. There should be redirects. Uh, so I see that I'm covering the code. Not good. Let me fix that. Uh, let me make myself a bit smaller since, you know, that's you know, the important part here. And let's make the code even thinner. Uh, well, almost this is what those um, 80 characters are for, I guess. Uh, can I hide the right pane? I would kind of love to, but I can't, uh, but I don't know how. Anyway, so we have an XLUC. I will have an UT, that's important. And this should be the normative user profile, I guess. Mm. Can I have an 8? Not like that. So we will also be user profile. Also valid it, uh, view is a single file, uh, can also be a module um, in a similar way we have broken down the models and that's probably something that we should do soon as well. Uh, so um, user profile. And let's go to views. And we're going to have uh, <coughs> arguments should be passed as parameters in the same way uh, it is here on details. Let's actually take this as a template. Uh, why not? And we're going to have um, user profile with uh, user profile ID and what's what if i decided to call it next lock hmm. 
So A, it has to be underscore because otherwise uh, this cannot be resolved into a Django variable, Python variable. Um, but should it be next lock? Uh, let's take a moment to think about it. Um, I'm not sure we have a normative language for that yet. Uh, let's take a look. So in dictionary, we don't even have users. Okay, so we we said that Nick is it's all going to be always shortened to Nick, so this is actually correct. Uh, so let's do it as an Uh So user profile ID and Nick Slack. Um, so user profile. Uh, we will not the need this magic is going to be user profile um, where have we imported IDs in its original um, field? I do believe so, but let's double check. We are not handling it, so I think it, it is. Uh, and ID is assumed as primary key. So let's take a look. Um, so ID should be user profile ID. And if user, and we have to figure out a way how to do slugs and uh, do a redirect there. So one way to work incrementally uh, on on those is just to make a note into the original ticket uh, so we don't forget. Uh, so uh, what I tend to do is um, to hit edit and uh, do either to do or like housekeeping or something like that. And um, this one is uh, redirect profiles in case um, to a normative in a case of um, user make slack mismatch. Um, so let's do it afterwards. Um, We have a user profile. We shouldn't rely on user. We shouldn't need something else so far. Uh, we will, <laughs> we will. Um, but not now. And um, Um, I mean, for users, we don't have a template directory, I believe. Um, no. We will, we will have to create it. So let's... Is it users or authors? That is actually an interesting question. So this is also an architecture consideration. Um, the other way to fix it is that um, we don't necessarily have to assume that authors and users are the same object. Uh, that would especially make sense if, uh, since we have the sources, as I've mentioned, like the people that contributed to the site without being um, without being uh, uh, registered as users. So it would make sense uh, to have an outer profile extracted out of data and connected it to users. Um, this adds a bit more of a uh, redirection or like a few more SQL queries. I mean, it is potentially slower, but uh, we don't have to care about it at this scale. And also um, this is, uh, it will bring more clarity since this is implicit. Um, for the initial iteration, I would stick with what we have, uh, but that's also something um, 
to add here. And also potentially like it will require database migration. So this is actually something for consideration whether to do that in the initial version or after launch. But uh, have a separate um, uh, creation author profile. So <coughs> we need a link and then we just need the user uh, profile. Uh, I'd be always kind of grumpy that you can't do just uh, user profile. I mean, you can, but then you can't mix and match it with uh, the other ones, I think. So, um, and it's user profile without any models magic. Okay, so let's create the appropriate template. user profile with HTML that should be in templates and it should be under users. We are using plural everywhere. Let's be consistent. So users and in that case, the question is whether uh, the user isn't uh, duplicit and I would argue it is. Uh, so let's call it just profile and fix it in the views. So profile, what shall we have there? Uh, yeah, we're not going to do pagination and iteration since this is a single item view and we are not going to um, <coughs> be working on the on the list yet. Um, well, speaking of uh, naming, I mean, it is important, trust me. Uh, everywhere we have list and detail. Uh, so actually, instead of profile, um, let's rename it to detail. Uh, uh, can you reasonably rename from here? Yep. So detail. Detail. Um, we don't need pagination. We should be coming back from the public. Uh, we actually don't need to pass in the heading, uh, it seems, because we can do it in the template directly. It makes sense here. Uh, and I would argue, I mean, we definitely want to do the profile dot nickname. Uh, the question is whether, for clarity, we should uh, call we could we should do that just that or uh, add a command that it's a profile. But I would say that we can leave it implicit. Be like you know, this is your page. <laughs> so let's see how far our blind editing is working. Um, so here we are on the page. Uh, all right, we're not linking to it. So how do we link to the page? Uh, we need to do the reverse lookup. And we need to do that using the ID and a sock since we have a sock. Um, I'm not sure whether it's uh, whether it's uh, mandatory. But either way, um, in the common article detail, um, we want to do a URL tag uh, that 
links to the URL called um, user detail. Which I'm not sure whether we don't have a previous, you know, yeah, iteration of it. So let's call it a detail. And we are passing in the user profile ID. Uh, I hope that the syntax goes like this. Uh, but one way to find out. And uh, user profile ID is the. Uh, article ha huh. so this is um, the first problem we have here so we the author is not the author object um, I mean author but we do have the author we have introduced the author profile object which has a has an ID and let's see uh, how that would directly look like I think that I've mangled the syntax anyway uh, okay so the next slug is mandatory uh, so maybe just hack it around with um, the slug being outer uh, Okay, so white space is the separator. Yep. And the disadvantage of this is that uh, if some of a uh, right out article. Um, is that if there would be an empty field, so this is working incidentally for this one, um, but the problem here is, and you see that, is that if article.author will be empty, like the whole page fails, um, which is kind of a downside of how uh, the linking works um, in uh, in uh, Django but what we, what we can do is to um, move those line by line you can do this with HTML um, I'm not saying it's the best thing to do but it works and um, we can double check that both of those exist um, in an if so um, if this and what was the other guy currently done x -lock. and I would argue uh, that we should just verify the article outer profile uh, whether it has been correctly fetched um, we do and if uh, no we need to do else and then we can do and if um, and um, so in case we don't fetch it what shall we do Do not display outer at all. Probably. So actually, let's move it here. Let's move it for the whole table. Or maybe actually outer unknown. Uh, just to point out to it and then we'll figure it out how to handle <coughs> sources properly. So th this is something um, also to make a ticket for. 
um, just to remember it. Uh, so, and the issues. Um, and all creations without authors properly. Um, because originally uh, there are creations with uh, sources. And this is probably a bug. <laughs> and um, not strictly required for evacuation now. I mean, definitely handy. But given it only applies for the very old articles. And it's not a significant per, 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 um, percentage it can wait, but we have to keep it in mind while designing all of this. All right, so um, the else is currently un saying unknown. Um, and um, this is not necessary and I would argue that uh, we should use the author profile and have luck for it Um, and uh, slug is going to be the property as before. Um, So slug uh, doesn't need any arguments than myself. Uh, it will return my nickname and it's a property. Um, this is not your URL safe. And I think that for slugs, we have created uh, something for creations on um, how to extract slugs. Yeah. And uh, this is something that's actually, I think, interesting. So, what is in here? Uh, is so it it has something to do with how Unicode uh, recognizes text. So in Unicode, um, there are like there are two distinct concepts. One is uh, a character, as in you know a, which is like an ideal a, uh, an, an abstract ideal, and um, that has two representations. Um, in a simplified way. One is a glyph, which is the A you see on the screen, and the other one is encoding, which is uh, the binary representation of A that is uh, stored in the computer. Um, and um, if you have a text string that you know is a text, that's in Unicode, uh, you also actually know something about the properties uh, of those characters. So, uh, if you have a character that it's not a simple ASCII, uh, uh, ASCII sign like A, but you have, for example, D, so like D with a hook, D uh, can actually be represented uh, multiple ways in a code. And um, one of them is 
an ideal character of Dio that has an aside con point, cold point and is a pretty valid character. But you can, what you can also do is <coughs> to use so-called combining characters. So uh, combining character, for example, is the hook. Uh, so you can basically say combining character D and hook. And that is indistinguishable uh, from the Dio when represented. Now, what this normalize function is doing is that uh, it converts those like it normalizes uh, all those uh, Dio characters into the D plus combining who character, and then you can iterate over the string and say uh, only leave characters that are not combining, which will give you the. So this is a pretty resilient way how to generate uh, slugs for international characters. Um, doesn't work for everything. Uh, there is a like if you will do this with smileys, with emoji characters, uh, with um, Asian characters, you will encounter problems. But for like if you have a site that's predominantly oriented at Western culture, uh, such as this, um, which can display the Chinese characters anyway, by the way, because it's not in any code, uh, this, this is a good way to, uh, pretty good and pretty resilient way um, to get a reasonable slug. So uh, what I'm doing here is uh, basically normalize all of those characters um, to combining characters, get rid of those uh, just, and then um, in addition, whatever uh, is a special character would be a special character. So yeah, indeed those smileys and whatnot, like whatever is not uh, uh, an SK character or a number, is replaced as a um, dash. Um, so dash is uh, what uh, what uh, the, like the the, the whole non ASCII stuff is replaced as a dash, and then if there is something that is not alphanumeric at the end and uh, or at the uh, at the beginning or at the end, there's a first and second line uh, that gets trimmed that gets replaced with uh, nothing. Uh, so this is our slugging uh, algorithm for um, uh, a space like that. And now, uh, you know, I'm tempted to copy paste, but you shouldn't copy paste. Um, so this should be refactored somewhere and I'm wondering what the correct place is. Um, uh, a lot of people tend to create utils, but utils, uh, that that's a lie. Uh, utils is, uh, you know, it's the programming equivalent of um, uh, Agro-Finland languages. Like, I don't know what to do with this, so let's create a big pack of miscellaneous. Um, so let's actually think what it does. Uh, it works with text, so it could be like, not text utils, but text. <laughs> Um, but it also deals with URLs. So um, this is socks are actually mostly for URLs. Uh, I'm not sure there is any other context we're using it for. So then the question is: uh, Is it closer to URLs or is it closer to text? Um, and determine the rename based on that. And my. I'm trying to think where else we would use that. So, T. Um, no, it's where else. And uh, the URLs is occupied in Django for the you know, actual URL construction. So I'm thinking whether to taint it <laughs> by putting in um, a text editing function and it would cause problems because this needs views. So there would be a circular import, uh, which is kind of annoying. So either a URL cleanup or just URL. Um, Or text. Let's make it text modification. So 
Um, this is going to be... Uh, there is actually a built-in function in Django that's called Slugify. Uh, but it works differently. It doesn't. It doesn't take care uh, of those uh, Unicode corner cases, uh, which maybe would be a, actually a good pull request for upstream. Uh, so let's not call it sluggy file. Let's call it create slug. Um, so this is just going to return um, creates slug out of self.name um, okay so uh, are we on top level or not no definitely not this is Magic, so actually three dots up because we're not going to do that in models, definitely. Uh, is a sub package needed, deserved for this? I would say no, right? So, uh, from text, I guess text, import uh, create slug and uh, let's create text here on the top application level. Uh, top application level I've set. Are we on top of application level? Yes. So text.py uh, and in text.py we'll have the create uh, slug with I guess from text. <laughs> um, of course I mean, most of this could be um, chained, but just no. Um, and we should also, in retrospect, uh, bring uh, build tests for this. But I think that this came from my pretty well tested function from my other project. Um, anyway, so we have created slugs. We have created slugs. So. Was there anything else that we needed um, to make this link properly? Uh, right. Maybe we have crashed something. Let's take a look. Right. Uh, so, I mean, the Django reloader is pretty resilient, but can't handle certain cases. Uh, so then you just need to hit Ctrl C and restart. And uh, yeah, um, we are using some Django functions here that we haven't uh, imported. So this is what the tests are for. That they would tell us this. And uh, I think this is not used anywhere else. Uh, and we will also need the regular expression module. Um, okay, so how are you doing? Pretty badly. Uh, are we correctly referring to the attribute? Uh, that is the thing. Um, that was in the detail, right? So in the detail, we are going for out article author profile dot slug. Uh, have we slug get slug? Right, we are not slugifying. That may be actually a problem. So get slug is what we are looking for, and we need to import that. So, good luck. Once it rolls, or and or if we haven't crashed it, uh, can't import. Good luck. From uh, DDCZ. Uh, 
Oh well, right, isn't great suck. And I um Oh see, it can handle some reloads. Not all of them. Uh, and are we passing in the correct name? So Sulfonic that's working. Two ways to debug this. One is um, we could do print here or something like that, or we can um, do the right thing and write a test. But of course, since, uh, since we don't have the setup, uh, is this actually calling um, our data somewhere now. Uh, but I, so let's get our hands dirty on some tests. Um, I am normally doing a lot more of that on Fresh Project, but since this doesn't have the correct infrastructure, uh, it's going to be pain in the ass a bit and it's late. But let's take a look what we have here. Uh, not this, um, but this. So we do have a test for our initial render call. Uh, we need a test. This is a show going to be a test for models. Um, so screw that. Um, And we can actually do that on command article. So we do have something. Cool. Uh, so there is a test for slug generator. Um, so this should be redone for the uh, for the slug function. Uh, this was unnecessary. Uh, but we can kind of steal this test case for um, the test of the user profile. Um, the only and main annoyance is that it's uh, and the user profile is a big, big object, but hey. Uh, so test user profile. Um, also, before I hit save, um, let's can I actually run a server as well as a as test? Let's see. One way to find out. Yep, it works. Also, uh, although you can see how it takes a while to create all the databases, we need more tea for that. Um, all right, so what we will need. So we are going to do a slug generator. Uh, from models, we will need a user profile and user profile. Uh, I mean, uh, gosh, um, using multiple operating system at once, not a good idea. Uh, how do you do uh, search and replace in this one? Uh, I always thought it's, oh, shift, command H, not just H. Uh, although we don't, do we need it in, in all files? We don't. So, uh, Oh, come on. I still can edit files. Alt oh, HV, okay. Uh, so, user profile, all of it, and also um, 
this should have same results for us. Um, although uh, what we are going to replace is um, the name for reasons I can't really uh, address. It's called this way. I remember actually because we thought that having a PHP column same as the MySQL file name uh, was not feasible. Um, you think stuff like that when you're 16. So let's see what will happen to our tests. And uh, this is something where people using statically compiled languages would say, ha, I've told you. Uh, because um, we, since I can't use editors properly anymore, uh, since I've been a manager, I'm sorry. Um, we have replaced uh, the get slug to create slug in import, but not in the model. Uh, we did in creations, yeah, that's fine, but not in users. Um, so here in the model, there is somewhere that's luck, uh, which should not get into a loop, loop, not loop, um, but should instead create the slack with the function we created. There we go. So if we reload this and have a T for that, it maybe improves things. Maybe not. Um, are we running the server? Yes, we are. Um, but now we know that the function as in the model is returning the slug correctly. Uh, if called the same way as from the tests. <coughs> so if you call it as get slug, but that's not what you're doing because we have created a property. So now either uh, we are also going to get together just to be consistent um, or we're going to rely on that property. And um, I mean, based on the Django convention, I would be actually tempted to say uh, this should work. Uh, I mean, why should I call differently an attribute uh, just because of a slightly different backend. Um, and we can see that this is not where the problem is. This is still working. Uh, have the amount of tests increased, right? Uh, it is, we had failing tests, so that's not where the problem issue is. Uh, so, typo in a template. Typos are always best. That's what the compiler would save us from. Um, except now because most of the templates uh, are not statically checked. All right, so we have a proper link. Uh, we click it and uh, we have a template problem. So let's take a look at user slash detail uh, dot HTML. Uh, what template have we created instead? Um, yep, typo again, users slash detail. Uh, this, I am programming, uh, one of the annoying side effects of programming is that you also see typos in books and you just can't help. Um, 
Okay, so we have a template and it's not really displaying anything. And the reason is that uh, we have opted for abbreviation in templates. So let's see whether this helps. Ta-da! Uh, we have a profile. It doesn't contain much. So is there something that we should display? Um, so we've been displaying ID. We've been displaying the level, which is like the the more uh, basically the more active area on the site, um, the higher all level, the different your star uh, after a nickname is. How often you log in, um, description, and the article summary. And I think if you're logged in, uh, then you also go for the discussion tables you have and the reputation and comments by other people. Um, there is a problem with encoding here. And I do wonder, oh, and this production. So as you can see, encoding's fucked up. Uh, so that looks reasonably easy to implement as long as we uh, have the all the data. So we'll keep updating this, but I would say that if nothing else, um, we should add the description because this is the public description that people are adding. Uh, so this is actually the fun part. You write stuff and it just appears and you don't have to do much. Um, what should be the structure though? Also, should this be considered an article? I mean, not in the article sense, but still, it's like the main creation people have. Um, but now, uh, I mean, initially I would go just with what you're doing uh, elsewhere, uh, which I forgot what the proper structure is. And that is that we are doing it as a paragraph with a label. Uh, so that's the one. And there is profile, the description, I think. So. I mean, as long as they have a description. Uh, so let's see uh, whether this would work for my profile. Also, actually, before I do this, um, oh, let's do this first. Let's do separate comments. Uh, this comment is large as it is, uh, but I like to have comment that you know makes sense. Uh, so no, this is not working. So what was the field name? Right. Um, we are going to we are going to be responsible for uh, our childhood problems. Okay. So uh, this is fine. Should be bold, but that should be styled um, when it's a label. Um, I would argue that actually, uh, so this is a link to send a message DM to the user. We don't need to sort it out. Uh, but I would actually say that the icon is something that's um, pretty important for uh, for user identification. So let's also add that. And um, then I think that this should be okay as an initial skeleton. Um, and uh, let's add adding proper profiles as a separate ticket. Um, so yeah, this is what we're having, so new issue. Um, proper user profile. Site. Because model exists, could be confused. 
Uh, this is actually a good first issue. If someone would like to contribute, uh, you know, this means just extending a demo. Um, this is definitely necessary for evacuation. I mean, people are sensitive for that. Um, and for production launch. All right. So, uh, the icon. Icon. So, icon is an image. Uh, not all users have it, and actually, not all users can have it because you're only entitled to upload stuff um, when you go up a level on the site. Uh, courtesy to 90s and, uh, you know, this few kilobytes uh, of um, few kilobytes of uh, disk space potentially being considered a problem when you have 10,000 of users. Um, yeah, we were young. And the storage was differently priced. Um, nevertheless, uh, this requires us knowing uh, the media. And so how should they always start with an API? I mean, how should the API look like? Um, that said, uh, let's go one by one. And I think that this is a good place to comment. Um, because two things, icon and having the link um, actually in uh, all proper places. So, um, icon requires media handling, so it's actually potentially more important than a line, so uh, more complicated than a line. Uh, so let's just um, make a note. Um, And um, let's fix the linking. Uh, so this goes instead of author email, and we have started here. We have started in the command article. And oh God, is it article everywhere or not? It is. Uh, so, because we need to copy paste all of this. Also, when I mean, I would say it's not worth creating a template tag for. But I'm uh, maybe it is. Let's let's put it for, for potential future refactor. Let's put it under housekeeping. Uh, whenever you're copy pasting, like think about uh, whether those are separate concepts or not. Uh, so uh, template consider template stack uh, for displaying authors. Uh, so uh, the way I approach copy pasting, if it's something that's similar but not the same domain wise and it can diverge in the future it make it actually makes sense to copy paste uh, you don't have to dry out everything uh, but in this case uh, displaying an outer and the outer link that's going to be same on uh, all creation pages so it doesn't make sense to pretend uh, it's something else uh, in which case i would say that template stack in the future is the correct thing to do but uh, one way to verify that uh, is to actually go through those and see uh, whether we are wh whether we are displaying all of this uh, the same way. 
So, and yeah, the answer is no. There is an article author, wait, I've pasted this badly. That's, that's also the potential for problem always. Um, so, because we are only doing that inside the, wait, we are saying unknown. Uh, so in the span class, uh, there is always something and it's only the uh, A that is uh, displayed. So, yep. And we're using various ways to display a table, which in itself is probably a problem. So that needs further in introspection. Um, but in gallery, it, may, it probably makes sense. Gallery is special uh, compared to uh, other, because uh, others are mostly focused on text. Um, gallery, obviously, uh, it's a picture grid. So um, it makes sense that It is displayed a bit differently. And as you can see, it has its own set of problems. And also, as you can see, well, we went for a non a non alter and ended up with a unknown user for that specific user. But it works for this one. So that requires an investigation. Um, so Let's also mark it for housekeeping. Um, this is called the future box. So, our housekeeping item. Um, um, X, uh, uh, particular auto going to own. This should be probably more of a production link than local link, um, but hey, uh, once uh, I will have more contributions, uh, we'll go with that. Also, thank you for the heart. <laughs> uh, so this is And it, right, it worked for the other author, so it's not about um, different uh, variable. So let's take a look here. Um, this is now proper. Uh, so again, it's in the TD that we are doing this. Actually, let me copy paste the whole thing because that should work now. So, seems to work. Uh, detail, photo detail, that's a gallery detail. Uh, Things fine, yes, yes. Also has an alter. But um, this is actually written, uh, we don't have to, see this is why stuff is different. Uh, so in this case, the news alter is always um, editor. So it always has to have a profile. Um, And also, we haven't created 
uh, an attribute for that. So let's put it on housekeeping as well. Um, it is it is really good to keep things discreet because it's easier to you know get lost for you. So um, um, and the news authors properly. Uh, so this is fine. Um, all right. This was for the details. Um, let's see what was the situation in lists. This list lists. Uh huh. Um, this is where the stuff was in span. I see now. I'm tempted to go and say whether not to display the provided author in case we can't find the profile because uh, that feels more fail safe um, but let's stick with what we're doing currently um, for time being um, so um, it's not a TD anymore we are because we are not in Kansas and it's not article we're going with the shorthand for some reason um, so a dot and a dot auto profile dot ID and slack This also means that we definitely shouldn't fuck up uh, on the Slugify function because otherwise it takes the whole page down. Um, yep, not very resilient. Uh, those are those are the trade-offs to think about. Like um, even if you decide differently, um, always know uh, when you're doing so, such trade-offs. And uh, if this would be a um, larger project, uh, what have I done? Have I been copying that with the author? Yeah, I was, sorry. Um, if this would be a larger project, uh, then this is exactly, I think that should go into the documentation um, because otherwise no, we're just fucked long-term. All right, so we do have a alter profile setup. So now if we go back to our non-production environment in one of the gazillion pages we have opened up, um, then we can see that we indeed have fucked it up. Uh, so it's the slug that's not working. And the reason is going to be that gallery is not uh, the global creation, so it will not have the slug function, I believe. Um, but let's see whether it's working correctly on the other side, the uh, other sides. So yeah, here it's fine. Here it is also fine. Uh, it is, is it fine in detail? Right. Um, there is a user called unknown just to make it more fun for us uh, so it would be fun in right but that's our that's our, uh, the reason why it looks weirdly is uh, our insufficient HTML parser that we'll need to fix uh, is it I would say so 
Like, unless we fucked up uh, HTML in details. But... This now looks po more plausible than I thought. Uh, but it is still a creation, so... If we would fuck up the HTML, then this should be fucked up as well. And it isn't. So I would say, uh, because most of those editions use um, tables, and our ab abomination of a HTML parser doesn't handle those well. So that's to be fixed. Same here, as you can see. Um, room for improvement, is it called? Uh, but what we did is working. Uh, the link is working. Yeah. One by one, one by one. Um, yeah, those are the same page. So except for gallery and f it's working for photo gallery. Uh, so there is something else that's a problem because that is using the same templates. Um, and it's just not working for this. Um, and also it's not working for a particular user profile ID. Uh, so maybe let's look it up. Uh, oh, right. Let's not log in because I would kill you. Um, that we still do have this problem with uh, the remote desktop. Uh, so let me go to admin. And also because this is potentially private data, let me take it off screen for you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it will only take a sec. Um, but I will take a look Oh, um, here in users. Now that I think about it, user profile is not visible in admin. That is something to be fixed. Huh. So, this is me, you can see that. Uh, but there is actually no way to be a user profile. Um, so this is to be fixed in the future. But then um, the real problem is, again, uh, that the Nick slug um, is fucked. Um, and then the question is, uh, since it is not used uh, for anything significant than a CEO, uh, the SEO, I mean, <laughs> uh, the question is uh, whether or not to um, display something like unknown as a slug. Uh, and debug it later. It is a trade-off that you should be uh, conscious of because um, those exceptions are actually good. Because when they happen, uh, you get an email. Uh, you know it's happening. Yeah. When, you're a res when you're resilient, uh, you may display something that's suboptimal uh, or it's just fucked up and you don't know about it. Uh, users have to tell you. So uh, there, is a tr there is a general trade-off for resilient system and self-healing system. Like, if the system is too good at self-healing, um, you may not know it's ill. Um, so, um, in this case, I'm kind of tempted to go with resilient. And uh, the other thing you can do is to properly lock errors. Uh, so, let's do that, and let's do that as a to-do, and uh, let's make a ticket for it for the next time. That stuff went wrong. So this was... Uh, huh. No, there is a trick. Um, I think that we don't. We just don't have a slug for gallery. Um, so let's take a look. Because the slug was on... What gallery is still creation? Well, slug is on creation. Uh, it's the... Slug plus property. That is not there. So don't try on get slug and have a property called so property for slug. Um, 
again, a disadvantage. Two ways to access that. Uh, this should probably be with underscore, so you know people are not using uh, inconsistently two APIs. I mean, by people, I mean me. Uh, but still, you are people, past you and future. Um, uh, right, uh, but never mind. Uh, this was on creation. We are calling for user profile. And that is outer profile. And that is in, where is it? Gallery detail, gallery list. Um, so, gallery picture list we are at and we are having an out we are having an outer in an attributes outer profile and that exists and the slug doesn't exist so it is a problem in the slugification on a user profile okay so that was in user or users. Uh, yep. So Slack of a user is created from a user. It's what's going to, we're going to return. But if there isn't a Slack, then uh, let's create just a um, mood. I mean, we could have a play word somewhere. Um, but let, let's let's start with unknown. And um, I guess to do currently, because we don't have a proper logging infrastructure. I mean, there is some logging infrastructure set up, but I would say that uh, that's for a separate episode. Uh, so we can error and uh, create a ticket because otherwise we're going to forget it. Um, and I would say that that's actually calling for a separate ticket. It's not um, housekeeping. Uh, so um, proper uh, logging um, of errors. Well, we verify because I think that we do have something set up. Um, and slugs and it's uh what is its user profile so uh send a warning error on user profile on dot slug being empty um i mean the other option uh, how to actually maybe do that properly if uh, if you're actually interested in performance um is to add a new field I get a new field to a database, uh, have it cached, and uh, sort out all those things during migration. This is definitely not a be uh, beginner friendly. It is definitely, I mean, it is a bug on production data. And that should be fixed before we abandon our server for the production launch. So. Nevertheless, um, since we have fixed that, uh, let's see what we get now. If we provide a mood. Um, yep. So my guess is that um, here we have a one offending outer ID that we can't handle well. So that's to be looked into in the future but otherwise this works well it provides links so i guess we can declare initial increment of this feature done <coughs> time for a t okay so Yeah, commit. Uh, we've been adding a few files, so let's take a look of them. 
Uh, never forget about, forget about this. Uh, you are not going to get auto at with cheats uh, for good reasons, but it's annoying. Um, what is this actually? Binary final. This looks like some visual code bullshit. But we are interested in our new templates, definitely. We are interested in our new user profile test, although we can do this on online. Uh, the text editor and the rest of it should actually be in the um, get ignore, honestly. And what we have done is actually, I would call it a feature. So, um, link creation authors to their profiles. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't contain everything. We do have a lot of housekeeping to do, but uh, let's refer to the ticket correctly. So the ticket was, was it 42? Uh, yeah, it was 42, magic ticket. So, refs. Forty-two. Um, see what happens. And actually, my intuition would be to deploy it in this state because I think it's still an improvement over basically fake links uh, to the same site. Also, the branch shouldn't be hide email, but uh, whatever. Uh, so let's see whether Circle agrees with us on that and let's see whether there's some housekeeping that we want to do still. Um, let's take a look into that icon thing. Uh, I, I think that that should be reasonably easy. Um, also let me know let me know if there's something that you're interested in in particular. Um, I mean, if I remember correctly, um, the icon in production uh, was just a link using uh, the ID as a name. Uh, give me a sec, I'll, I'll just close my door here. So, um, and the format, it needs a format because I we've been allowing users to uh, upload multiple formats. So yes, there was a char field to do that. And if I remember correctly, the char field uh, just contains the name and the picture. Yep, it's just happening to be on one path. Now, we don't have a proper media handling yet. Um, this is an old software that assumed, uh, you know, there is a directory that's exposed as this URL and we are done. This is not how modern software works. Uh, this is not even how the uh, rewrite should work. Um, you're always uploading to some upstream media storage. Can be a local file, can also be like a remote server like, you know, S3. And then you have a completely different URL uh, that serves as an entry point. Uh, that's usually, I mean, it can be a link to the same server, but usually it isn't uh, because you want to have a CDN. Uh, you want to have a cluster of servers distributed around the world, located closer to you, that download uh, the um, download the media from the upstream server uh, where you're actually storing it, uh, but caches it, and that you know, removes a shit ton of latency, makes uh, the site uh, so much faster for 90% of the users. Uh, so th 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 this is how, you know, media handling is designed those days. Um, I think that we should be doing that uh, similarly. Uh, but first, let's take a look whether that test went well. It went. Uh, so I would argue that we should merge. And also now that I look how weird, how I'm developing this, um, 
I probably should have a separate branch for um, setting those up. All right, so let's put this. And let's take a look how I've been handling media, actually. Uh, because gallery is containing media and uh, oh, there is at least some hack that I in which I have figured it out. Uh, so let's take a look at the view. Um, so detail is uh, displaying a picture URL. Okay. Um, so this is in creation models. Um, gallery, gallery picture. Okay, so we do have a media media roots URL that contains a path. Now the question is uh, whether the path is the same as for users. And um, the answer is I have no idea, but there is one easy way to find out. And I would, well, I can't. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, this is a proper trip down the memory line. If you look at a production uh, into color, it probably doesn't have its own prefix, um, which is a problem on its own, if you ask me. Uh, oh, that was a bad link. Okay. Yeah, no idea about namespacing back then. Um, but let's try it out then. So if we take the user profile, uh, let's add a method. Uh, I mean, a property probably. And call it I mean, it should be user icon, so icon, icon, icon URL, uh, profile icon URL, I mean, profile picture URL, oh, naming, um, icon URL, not path because it's different. Uh, See, writing and talking. So property would be um, get icon URL just because that's what uh, Python demands URL. So uh, let's shamelessly copy paste that. Um, do I have URL join? We don't. Uh, so let's fix that afterwards. Uh, we need settings. And then um, there was this component. And then it was uh, this guy. Let's see how it works. And we need uh, from django.conf, uh, we need settings uh, to be able to refer to that. And we need a URL join, which is, I don't know where, uh, URL lib, yeah. And um, against everyone else, I tend to include standard lib before Django instead of just sorting alphabetically. Um, all right, so we do have an icon. Uh, also, meanwhile, we are also deploying. So I have uh, made the changes on a bad branch, uh, but that's easy to fix. I'll show you how. Uh, first, let's take a look in uh, CI, because that's uh, that's something we definitely don't want to abandon. Um, 
now let's call this um, let's also call this we're not going to do all the housekeeping today uh, two hours ago is not what we did and nine minutes ago that sounds like a proper deploy so as usual uh, before I deploy though because we don't have a clean master you see there is a useful feature called stash uh, let me use it and explain it while we are deploying um, so if you make your tree dirty uh, like if you do edits uh, on top of a tree uh, that you don't actually want to do uh, there is a pretty useful uh, uh, I mean, this is mostly useful if you realize that you're working on a bad branch um, on something that you don't want to or, you know, you you realize that you want to branch history first. Um, there is a useful feature called stash that basically says uh, well, there is work in progress on the current tree. Um, kind of create a fake comet and store it away. Uh, so this gives you a clean tree. Uh, you can do all the history of write stuff um, or deploy in this case and then git stash apply uh, basically takes that fake commit and uh, puts it back um, into uh, on, on top of your tree um, I mean internally it works as every other commit if you would uh, look into the git ref log uh, you would see it as an object um, it's just a shortcut but it's pretty damn useful um, so let's wait for the deploy, do the icon, and um, then we'll be done for today. Um, but, uh, you know, worst case next Thursday, um, but maybe maybe earlier. Uh, I'll see what my schedule is, but uh, I feel like this should happen more often. Um, also, meanwhile, uh, have you noticed how the server was complaining about the syntax. Um, let me just, uh, in the URL join. So let me just see whether, right, let me not see because we have stashed stuff. Uh, it's not to self, proper SSH agent. Uh, but that would need SSH agent tunneling, and for that I would uh, want to have my local SSH agent set up. And for that I'm waiting for YubiKey to release the USB C key with NFC support. Um, annoying. Anyway, let's get back to our uh, branch. Um, we shall verify whether the deploy went well, and actually <laughs> let's discuss monitoring at one point. Um, but I mean, at least it's up. So, uh, um, if this is open, then uh, we are not displaying it everywhere, anywhere, sorry. So, first the, gets, the promise gets the apply that we kind of shouldn't forget about if you want the changes. And um, we have set its dot icon URL. Uh, so um, if um, profile icon URL uh, currently let's just do image. Um, Profile icon uh, URL and it is a courtesy to our less fortunate uh, well people not users <laughs> just to everyone to add um, alternative text um, if I would have a Facebook UI, then of course you can auto detect what's in the text. That would be pretty complicated for those. So uh, let's just say that this is an icon of the user. 
Um, and if we reload, then we have a crashed server probably. Uh, yep, still invalid syntax on like 61 of users.py. Um, because we are missing uh, colon and get icon URL is not defined. Uh, right. Talking and writing uh, at the same time. Totally underrated. So it displays the alt text, so everything is fine except for uh, URL is probably not working. So let's take a look what's in there. Um, Do, 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 do. Right, so one thing is, you can see that the media route is actually going to the gallery, which is wrong. And I think we have a ticket for to fix it. And the other thing is that, uh, we, even if this does not exist, uh, we still return an URL fragment. Uh, and also it's gallery media, media root, so it kind of makes sense. Um, so we can either make icon media root uh, or do the media root URL without gallery, which I think would give us, um, it would give us attributor that also works. There's no media, wow. Uh, in which case, uh, I would argue that let's make our own environment variable here. Um, so, because this is also user provided media, so uh, user icon uh, media root URL, in which case we don't need this additional uh, path. Um, this is going to be be in the base settings, I believe. Uh, yep. Okay, so we are totally following our broken standards. Uh, I mean, in a lot of cases, it is better to follow broken standards than to invent a new ones. Uh, so... That works well. Now we have to decide uh, whether in case uh, the icon the user doesn't have an icon, uh, do we want to return exception or do we want to return an empty string? And um, I would say that or none. And uh, I would argue that it should be none. Um, it should be known because we're mainly going to use that in templates. Uh, so let's not do exception. That would kill the whole rendering. Um, and also this, uh, I'll show one Python feature you don't have to do if else. Um, if something is returning empty string or none, uh, which in this case, uh, it should return none. Um, you can just do or. So in, in case there is none, it will return, no, in case of none, it will return the other part. We have to do it, uh, we have to do if, unfortunately. So if uh, the icon attribute is not existing, uh, return none. Otherwise, uh, return the URL join. Um, I could demonstrate on this um, how single entry single exit works um, but unless there are people online interested um, I would leave it for a different session this works okay so I called this successful I'm also wondering given uh, it's not in the original 
page, I believe. But I would actually maybe add the icon here, if it exists. I think it would kind of uh, be a good personalization touch for the skin. Um, especially since we are more spacious. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So, at least for the skin I'm at. Uh, so if there is a profile icon that's going to be on the base public template, I believe. Um, somewhere down. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's set it here. Uh, if there is icon URL, this should probably in this context be a div. I mean, admin link is also P. This is confusing. We're using a paragraph somewhere and uh, div somewhere else um, that requires fixing. But meanwhile, um, except of course it should be the user icon in your hell and not a user profile icon URL not the icon of the outer of the page we are at Tada and oh, let's give it a class of user icon because um, we want to center it. Do you want to center it immediately? Probably yes. It should be easy. Uh, so I have no idea where CSS is. <laughs> uh, .css. That's a lot of .css. Um, so let's make it in the skin we're at. Uh, it's dot user icon. Um, in navigation, so um, folder user icon text align center. Let's see whether it will work. Works pretty well. I can't decide whether I like it or not. Uh, it's unusual, let's say. Uh, but I'll top for leaving it as it is for now. And move forward with it. So, uh, no, pagination. Uh, Uh, this will need a lot of fixing. Um, huh, yeah, definitely not up to date. But it looks um, like it works sufficiently well. So let's commit it. Um, so, feature display uh, icons in other profile and user navigation. And um, there is a ticket we can refer to it for this. I mean, either that or um, user profile sites. I also, I guess, 
42 and 44 both. Yeah. 42, 44. All right. I would say that I'm done for today. So let me merge and push this and do the last deploy. Um, and for that, um, with that, I would like to thank you for all, do, all of you who visited. Uh, it was a few people. And um, I will post this online. Um, I will also hope to make more useful segments out of it. Um, and um, if there is something specific to that you would like to see next, uh, something explains more or um, have you know, um, have a direction that I should move on with uh, the development uh, first um, because you're interested in anything, uh, let me know. I guess the shortest, like, I mean, most convenient way to do that would be Twitter um, because that's one thing, one uh, side that I'm occasionally scanning for mentions <laughs> those days. Um, I'm otherwise trying to keep it pretty non-digital, non but... Uh, this uh, works for me for um, this purpose. And um, I'll see you either next week or uh, I will let you know earlier on Twitter um, when would be the next episode. So um, prepare your tea. I think it shouldn't be just me, you know, because that's lame. Um, and um, enjoy the week while I deploy the new version uh, because we have a success. So let's stop the server, run our favorite deploy script, have a team. Builds are what the T's are for. It's the new, you know, we're not compiling, so we have to be at least deploying. Also, um, for maybe even better communication channel, um, if you want to have a long form conversation and you're actually interested in the project, there is uh, Slack. <clears throat> that is linked into in the readme. Um, I think that I have added an invitation that doesn't expire there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, if it wouldn't work, ping me on Twitter, I will fix that. Um, but otherwise, um, otherwise everything should be set up. Um, I'm wondering whether there is a way that uh, I could speed deploys. <laughs> but um, all of that requires redoing the architecture. So like us being um, further in the future with the project <laughs> and being able to talk to different MySQL. The reason why I can't do that is that uh, I... Like the, yeah, the PHP is so old that it can't really talk to newer MySQLs. Um, the MySQL library that's on the server is just refusing to do so, and upgrading it is borderline impossible. Um, unless you change the whole environment, and that creates all sorts of other, pro uh, uh, all other sorts of problems. Um, so let's rather move on and work on um, being able to replace the you know old version with the initial iteration of the new version and then work on all the features. All right, deploy successful. Um, let's see whether I can 
verify that the site's not down. Um, it's not, but I don't see the icon. So I my guess is that it's what uh, we've observed before. Um, let's kill this guy. This is pretty annoying. Uh, I believe that, um, well, it could be part of the deploy script. The problem is that uh, the script is like, it's using sudo and it's whitelisted for a single command for SVC. Uh, I would really be interested in why SVC is not working, um, but that's for a different DevOps debugging. Uh, so let's see whether this helped. Edit. So everything works. We are good here. So with that, um, let me real verb up. Thank everyone who showed up for the attention. And um, I said, see you worst case in a week. Bye.